Salutation, Nickerickies. So, some of you may have heard of this game called Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, I'm here to do something a little different than what I'm used to. I'm going to be going through every single FNAF game that I can think of that is official in order. And I'm going to be telling you guys which ones are my least favorite and all that. So, this is basically like a top whatever of my favorite FNAF game. So... Before we get into this, please let me know what you guys think about these FNAF games in the comments below, as well as subscribing if you guys want to see more stuff like this about Finance of Freddy's. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, starting us off at number 9, we have FNAF 3. Now, FNAF 3 is a good game for so many reasons, because of the story, because Springtrap was introduced, and because it also closed a lot of questions that later became even bigger questions later, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the biggest complaint for me and why it's so low on the list is because the knights take so long to beat, and all the phantoms do is break your equipment. That's not threatening or intimidating. The only one who can kill you is the one in the game who has the shittiest jump scare in the franchise, besides FNAF 1 Foxy. But I mean, look at that. That's boring. But I mean... It's still a great character, and it was it was difficult. It was a good game and had good story, but I would not call it the best or even close to the best. It is very slow, and it is you know, you will be bored playing this. I was when I played it. That is for sure. All right, up next at number eight we have FNAF VR. Now some people would disagree with this, saying that it is the best FNAF game. I can agree that it is a very good game. It is a great game. But FNAF VR, most of the characters that you play against are characters that you've already seen for years. You've seen the same characters and this, doing the same things. Don't get me wrong, I love the characters. I love that they're still being used to this day. It's better than not seeing them at all. But that does not mean that it will not make the games any less scary. It just seeing the same thing over and over again will like you'll like know what the jump scare would look like you can I, like when i heard vr was coming i was super excited i was going to be terrified no matter what but you can predict on what it's going to look like because you played the original game most likely if you're going into the fnaf games but it's still a great game all in all and there were still new characters like dreadbear and grim foxy their jump scares were pretty good but, um, we do not talk about the plush babies. They're, um, not scary. Let's just say that before, um, I hurt the two fans out there of those characters. Okay, do not hate me for this in the comments, but number seven is Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Now, the reason why is be it is so low is because Finance of Freddy's 4 had an amazing story, had amazing designs, and that is great, but that's not the reason why, even though I just said that, shut up. But the reason why is because the story was based around the box, and we still haven't learned what is inside the box, and Scott even came out and said that the box will probably never be answered or opened or talked about ever again. And that's fine that he doesn't want to do the same thing over and over again, like he doesn't want to like bring up stuff of the past, but... If you're going to make a game completely based around like this mysterious box and not answer it, then you're going to leave a lot of people with questions. And also, it did make a lot of people question more things than have more answers for your own story. So it made the it made everything a little confusing. It started separating people in the community, saying "I think this" or "I think that." Etc. Etc. But that still doesn't mean that it is not a great game, and the designs were probably some of the best in the series. Number six, Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. The reason why it is not super high up on the list is because, uh, like the like the gameplay and like was not like it, it was not perfect because like I like. Uh, surviving against the animatronics wasn't the most fun thing. It was probably like my least favorite part in the game. My favorite part was just building the pizzeria. I'm not going to lie. And buying more animatronics. I wanted to buy them all, but unfortunately I couldn't with the time I was given. But it was still great. And 
the characters were great, but like only four characters out of the many that were introduced can kill you. But I'm I'm okay with that because some of them were great and like it was a great send off to the story. But the office you were in was kind of boring, like boring looking, and like you can only be attacked by the vents. That's, that's kind of it. But it was still a great surprise, like on how we were surprised with this game. And also, number one crate. Number five, Sister Location, because it's the fifth game in the series. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Sister Location is at five because it is it is still an amazing game, but I just like the other ones a lot more, in my personal opinion. But um, I still think Sister Location is amazing. It introduced some of my favorite characters in the whole goddamn franchise, like fi Funtime Freddy or Ennard. And it was just really well done it was the first time we saw like voice acting in the main series games and it was just really awesome to see on how much scott has been learning and yeah um uh, baby didn't get a jump scare which she was the main character in the whole thing so i don't know why she didn't but uh, we thought that we were going to get one from the custom night but nope no nope, we got a we got electro bab and that one has different eyes so it's a different character cool no, but in all seriousness, um, I'm happy Scott decided to also make something for the original FNAF fans out there so they can have, like, the original style of FNAF with the characters in that game, but also have, like, the sci-fi and the exploration to Sister Location. It was, it was really well done. <coughs> Number four, Ultimate Custom Night. Now, this game is by far one of the most lopsided FNAF games of all time. Some people hate it, some people love it and it, it, for many good reasons they hate it because the easter eggs in there were not very good like the that anime one and that uh, toy chica high school thing they were um interesting to say the least but it was awesome to see all the characters we got to know over the many years in one game and number one crate was in it so it was already a perfect game to be to begin with it was really awesome it was a great way to send off the main franchise like the main story like um it was good to see that the murderer got what he deserved but it's also sad to see that golden freddy will not rest and i don't think we're going to be seeing golden freddy that much anymore so it's it's kind of it was kind of sad it was a sad ending, but it was the ending that Scott wanted, and it was just really good to see that he finally was able to make the game that he always wanted to make. Number three, FNAF World. Now, don't yell at me in the comments, because if so, I will probably cry at night, and you guys don't want that unless you really mean. So, let's just, like, just throw this one, just let this one slide in, just let this one go this one time. Because FNAF World was the first game I ever played through on my channel. And it means a lot to me because that was the first game I actually completed on my channel. It was the first game uh, to record for my channel. It just did a lot for me. And that game still means a lot to me. Because hell, I, I've speed run, I have done speed runs of it with my friends three times. Um, I think, or two. I don't know. One or the other. But each one was really fun. And I enjoyed every time I played it. And it's just done a lot, of, a lot for me. But also, I, I like the idea. All the characters that we knew and loved were all in one game to, like, go on this cool adventure. And I was like, I, I love RPGs, so there was no reason for me to not like it. It just, the timing of release was not the best for the, for the game because it kind of bombed. So, uh, I still love the game, Scott. <laughs> Number two, FNAF 1. Now, you guys may be thinking, why is it at first? Well, because that's not my opinion, pal. No, I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, FNAF 1 is amazing. It was the first, like, the first game I was introduced to. I love it to this day. It's one of my all-time favorite games. It was a great start to an amazing series. It introduced really awesome characters that I know and love today. To, to this day. Ah, words. Who knew but i and it told a story without even saying anything like it didn't have any death mini games in this one it didn't have anything it was just like 
you had to find them yourself like you had to like predict this for just from the phone calls and what you were you were able to read in the rules or like whatever you found out about the game and it was just cool because you found out there was more to this franchise than you than you thought and boy were we right because it's probably one of the most confusing yet interesting stories in any video game franchise ever number one freddy and Sp no i'm just kidding finance of freddy's two uh, Finance of Freddy's 2 deserves to be number one for me because it is the scariest one in the franchise. You cannot change my mind. You have so many characters coming at you at once. You're on high alert constantly. You have to wind that music box. You have to take care of the toy animatronics and like also the withers. You have to flash the light on Foxy. Make sure Balloon Boy doesn't steal your whatever he wanted. Uh, and like, there's also the shadow animatronics that you can see by chance, the paper piles that could appear in your office when the puppet's coming, JJ by rare chance, it's just like, there was so much that you could do and experience and try to get with that game, and it was an amazing sequel to the first one, and probably it's, like, it was my favorite one to play through, it was my favorite one to play when I was a kid. Unfortunately, I rage quit it on my channel, but I mean, hey, that's just me. I'm just bad at games. Um, but FNAF 2 introduced so much to the story, and it made all this possible. FNAF 2 is basically the one that made the franchise go the, as long as it has, and it is an amazing game, so I will always love this one. And that's about it for this video. Um, that's all my... Uh, the FNAF games in the main series ranked from favorite to least favorite. Sorry if you guys didn't agree with my opinions, and if you didn't, haha, ha, mine's better. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you, uh, let me know your guys' opinion in the comments below, as well as not being mean in the comments to me about my opinions, because just remember that this is my personal opinion, and that does not mean that what I just said is true. It's just what how I this is just how I see the games in my opinion. So, thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you guys want to see more of this, make sure you guys subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you guys never miss a video from me. And if you guys are new, I would greatly appreciate if you consider joining the Nickrick family for almost daily gaming content. I love you guys all, and I'll see you in the next video. Roll the credits.